This video stood out to me because first of all, the thumbnail, look at this thumbnail. This is a beautiful, beautiful thumbnail. I, I just have to say that to start out. The peanut man nailed it. Also, this was on my recommended. This guy's got 840 subscribers and at the time it had 621 views. At the end of this, I'm gonna check how many views it has like now. But this is about Battlefield and one of my favorite Battlefields at that. And I think I've already developed my opinion on what this video is going to be. And I haven't seen the video yet. So let's do the it. The year is 2008. Gaming is in the middle of a massive evolution. The Oop. and PS3 are the heavyweights of the console world, while PC gaming continues to push the boundaries. First-person shooters are PC wasn't even a big Call thing compared to console at that point. Charge, well, look at that. standard for multiplayer titles. True. In the midst of all of this, something different is on the horizon. Battlefield Bad Company, one of my absolute favorite games of all- Okay, chat, before, before we get into the video, if you were around playing video games at the time, and you played Bad Company, what were your opinions on Battlefield Bad Company? Before he says anything, before I say anything, what were your opinions on Battlefield Bad Company? As it emerges, it introduces revolutionary concepts and features like destructible environments and a cast of characters that would break the mold for military shooters. Let's dive into the game that changed the Battlefield franchise. Before Bad Company. So, there's many reasons why this game changed Battlefield, but before he says anything, the one that I want to say, and by the end of this video, the one that I will harp on, is Battlefield Bad Company didn't take itself super seriously like the rest of the Battlefield franchise did. One second. Is my stream good? Okay, I don't know why my stream sometimes does it where it just says it's over, but I, th I think we're good. We're good, right? We're good? But yeah... It didn't take itself too seriously. Most FPS games had static environments where cover was permanent and the battlefield didn't evolve much. Most games all still do. Combat. Bad Company introduced the Frostbite engine, which allowed for destructible environments. This meant players could blow huge holes through buildings. This feature this is added a, big deal. a new layer of strategy. Players could no longer hide behind the safety of a permanent cover without worrying about the possibility of it being blown apart by a tank or even a well-placed grenade. I was going to say a grenade. A gameplay and forced players to adapt on the fly. The destructibility of the environment became a tactical weapon in itself. This was such a groundbreaking feature that it became a hallmark of the Battlefield series. Later games in the series expanded on this concept with more detailed and expansive destruction. The idea of Levolution in Battlefield 4 where massive map altering events like, and like this was huge. skyscrapers that could change the flow of battle was a direct evolution of this system. Okay, Ad so let's stop there. We'll, we'll kind of like stop after each section. Destructible environments, huge, huge, huge for Battlefield, yet... Battlefield Bad Company wasn't a game that was like really praised um, by the masses. It wasn't like a Battlefield 3 or a Battlefield 4 that like became this culturally significant thing, but I really think it should. And I'm curious, he's talking about single player here. I'm very curious what he says. It was the first Battlefield game to focus heavily on storytelling in the single player yes, campaign. Yes, completely agree with this. Characters, each with unique personalities and featured a humorous and engaging plot. They were hilarious. The fictional conflict between the US and the Russian Federation. You play as Preston Marlowe, a new recruit. I haven't heard that company, name in a while. A group of soldiers who have been sent to the front lines as expendable cannon fodder. They're given only the most dangerous missions with little expectation of survival. The campaign kicks off when tensions of the war are running high in Eastern Europe. What starts as a straightforward military mission quickly takes a turn when Marlow and his squad learn about a group of mercenaries known as the Legionnaires, a militia who are being paid in gold bars. Now this sparks a right, new motivation Right, finding the, the gold squad, bars, I remember the this. pursuit of gold. Within the first few minutes of the campaign, we are introduced to Sarge or Redford, a by-the-book squad leader who just wants to retire in peace. And then there's Haggard. The reckless <laughs> like, see what I mean by it doesn't take itself too seriously? A steady stream of hilarious one-liners, all that much more hilarious. Lastly, there's Sweetwater, the tech-savvy voice of reason with a pretty hopeless infatuation for the squad's mission commander, Mike One Julia. I could make an entire video about the sheer brilliance of Bad Company's campaign and its secret songs of it's unforgettable characters. characters in particular. But what's most important, though, and what sets it apart from all the FPS campaigns at the time, and frankly even from current titles, is that it wasn't afraid to step away from the already established serious and grim war narrative it embraced humor yes. to no end so if you look at like every war game they're all so goddamn serious like especially battlefield like especially battlefield battlefield is like as close to an arcadey war simulator as you can get and then this game 
was not like that. And this actually carries over to the multiplayer of the game as well. And to me, that's what made this so good. Creating a far lighter, more irreverent tone. Each character's complex and wonderfully crafted personalities was what truly set it apart from its competitors. This emphasis on humor and character development showed through in future titles as well. While later titles moved away from the humorous, lighthearted tone in specific, the success of Bad Company's campaign paved the way for future installments of the franchise to experiment more with narrative depth and character focus. Bad Company 2. The introduction of Gold Rush mode marked a significant evolution in multiplayer shooters, setting the stage for what would become the iconic Rush mode in future titles. In this mode, attackers are tasked with securing a series of gold crates. I didn't realize that Bad Company was the one that. Uh, this dynamic creates an engaging tone of mode that emphasizes teamwork, strategy, and coordination. The mode's success undoubtedly influenced the creation of other similar objective based modes in not only Battlefield, but in games like Call of Duty and Overwatch. While previous Battlefield games definitely were Overwatch. for PC, Bad Company was built specifically with the console demographic in True. mind. This meant optimizing controls, gameplay, Less and performance serious. for console hardware and player bases. Before Bad Company, large-scale multiplayer shooters like Battlefield were generally seen as a PC domain, where games could handle big maps, vehicles, and a large number of players. Bad Company showed that you could still have a robust, large-scale multiplayer experience on consoles without sacrificing too much in terms of things like map size, vehicle combat, or player count. Bad Company's success on console paved the way for games like Battlefield 3 and 4, which became multi-platform blockbusters. I wonder if I'll say anything about Bad Company 2. leading franchise across both PC and console gaming. Humor, yes. At the time, most military shooters took a very serious tone, focusing on the horrors of war and heroic sacrifice. Bad Company was one of the few to successfully blend humor with action. The characters were quirky and lighthearted, and the game wasn't afraid to poke fun. Even the, the overall story of this game was not too serious, which was, was a really good thing in my eyes. Military tropes. Okay, guys, back up. They said not to wait up. So you reckon that the rainbow sprinkles are the way forward with the donut? Absolutely, because then you get the different textures between soft donuts. You do get your ass over here right now. Hi, Mom. Like I'm coming live. It's so good. It's so good. From the war in um. What country am I in? Teamers approach that company <laughs> apart from other games. In but like, it's so good because. Like, yeah, in that situation, they're probably not going to be having a conversation about sprinkles, but I guarantee you back at base, that's probably a conversation. It's just brilliant and it's hilarious. Genre. It created very and unique, well-written characters, tone, making it memorable to players who were used to the grim seriousness of other FPS titles. It also made the game feel more accessible and fun, even for players who weren't hardcore shooter fans. While later Battlefield games returned to a more serious tone, the success of Bad Company's lighthearted approach inspired other developers to experiment with humor in their games. Games like Far Cry 3 and Borderlands would later blend action with humor in a similar fashion. Yeah. Bad Company initially allowed players to unlock new weapons through gameplay, with no option to purchase them via microtransactions. Uh, of when course. When they introduced microtransactions for certain unlockables, it sparked community backlash, eventually leading to the removal of the feature. This event foreshadowed future debates about microtransactions in gaming. The community's negative reaction to pay-to-win mechanics demonstrated that players valued and still do value fairness in progression systems, of especially course. in competitive multiplayer games. The controversy over microtransactions in Bad Company was an early oh, indicator EA, right? of the broader industry's growing focus on monetization. It shaped discussions around in-game purchases in later games, and DICE's decision to remove microtransactions after receiving flack from the community showed that developers needed to balance player feedback with monetization strategies, and they still very much do. Thank you for joining me as we took a closer look at Battlefield. For well, Bad Company, I really enjoyed oh, making this video still an outro. as Bad Company nice is nuts. truly one of my favorite games of all time. It holds a really special place in my heart. Sadly, the multiplayer servers for both Bad Company titles were shut down, but I do often yeah. return to the campaign when I'm in need of a nostalgia hit. Let me know Wait, what you guys think. all of the servers for multiplayer are shut down? I didn't know that. I know my opinion is most certainly biased, but I really have never understood why the Bad Company series is so underrated. I really do hope to see a third game in the future, as unrealistic as that wish probably is. Thank you again so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon. I'm cute. Oh, is he good? My head, I wanna drown my sorrow. <laughs> no tomorrow. No tomorrow. Do you know? Do you guys know what this is? What this is like? Like joking about? I don't know if I've ever seen this before.
You guys ever see the Gears commercial? Like the Mad World Gears commercial that was like the biggest commercial in video games maybe ever? One of the best marketing campaigns, period. Like, how brilliant is this? I'm dying or the best I've ever had. What does that mean? What does it mean? Yeah, well, it's a dream. It's how about this song? Mama's little baby love shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby love shortening bread. All right. You guys have... Uh, the year is two thousand. I feel like we need to play this game on stream. I feel like... I don't know if we're going to have time before uh, Black Ops 6 comes out, but God... That campaign was so good. So was Bad Company too. I didn't know the servers were shut down, but um, to have like a war game like that, that I was like it, legitimately hilarious. Whoever wrote that game, like legitimately hilarious. But what a what a blast from the past. I don't know if you guys ever played that one. Maybe you're too young to have. But Bad Company was amazing. The campaign was amazing. I feel like that's something we need to do. But uh, great video. And like like I said, this guy's got like, I wonder how many views this video has now. 621 when the I found it. 2008. Still 621. Okay. Chat, go like this man's video. Um, at Peanut Man, like great 844 subscribers. And like great video, great video. Go like that video.